Great South Africa announcing that it's evolving its business model. Run us through some of the rationale for that decision. Sure. <clears throat> Historically, about 80% or more than 80% of Great has revolved around private equity. In terms of that model, we've raised capital in the traditional private equity format, which is going to institutions around the world and raising money I privately into, into private funds. Mm -hmm. Now what we're saying is, let's take the good out of the private equity model in order to raise those initial funds, obviously we've demonstrated our ability to generate significant returns for our investors over a 19 year time frame. Mm -hmm. We want to take that return and try and replicate that for our shareholders going forward, i.e. let's go to the public markets, raise our capital there, and therefore all the returns that we've been generating, let's try to repl replicate those returns for our shareholders directly in, in terms of the new order. So do we simply view this then as a more lucrative model as opposed to there having been a problem with the previous one? There's no, there wasn't a problem with the previous model at all. That private equity models worked very well for Breit and will con continue to work well around the world. We at Breit though, just think there's a better model in terms of how to drive value in the underlying businesses going forward. So explain to us how exactly this will work and what it actually entails from here on out. Okay, so we've raised six billion from the public, from the public markets. With that six billion, our first two investments are gonna be approximately 34.9% of Pepco mm -hmm. and 49.9% of Premier. Um, of the six billion, about five billion will go into those two investments. We'll continue to drive value in those companies over the longer term. A key aspect here is we now have the ability to hold on to these investments by definition for a much longer term than the private equity model. Why? Because in the private equity model, you're forced to exit after about six or seven years. By definition, we can hold these investments for longer term because our investors, i.e. the shareholders in the new model, now have, can, can get liquidity at the top by buying or selling shares. Of course, you can hold on for longer. Is there, for instance, an exit strategy planned for the likes of Pepco where there's been speculation of it being relisted at some point? I think the speculation revolved around because we're in the previous private equity model. People understood that at some point we need to exit. In terms of the new order, there are no plans to exit or to list Pepco. Of course, both of these companies operate within the consumer space. Do you have a focus or a target on specific sectors right now? Um, we will go beyond the cash consumer space. Um, obviously, we're starting off with those two investments. They're investments we know well. We've been associated with them for between three and six years, respectively. Mm -hmm. uh, we like that space, but we will be looking broader to the industrial space and beyond as we build our platform over the next coming years. Of course, we know that you've raised the six billion rand through a rights issue. How much are, th are these two actually costing you, and where's the remainder of the money being directed? Okay, so of the six, about five billion has been directed towards these two investments. So therefore, we'll have residual cash of just over a billion, and we'll be eyeing future investments for that billion. Mm -hmm. You're changing your model and strategy at a time where a long-serving CEO, Anthony Ball, is stepping out with you stepping in. Was there a difference in opinion in terms of how to take the company forward at all? No, not at all. I mean, Anthony really is becoming a non-exec director but will retain responsibilities towards Braid4, one of our existing funds. Braid4, that program continues to run for another seven years. Um, he has responsibilities there as well. Mm -hmm. So he's very supportive of this model and we all, as a team, are actually very excited about where we're heading off to. Moving forward, should we be expecting any marked differences in terms of approach or growth strategy for the company with you at the helm? I think uh, the strategy going forward will be very much the private equity strategy that's been adopted over the past five to eight years. I have been running the private equity unit mm -hmm. uh, for just over nine years. So very much the strategy will revolve around driving value in our underlying investments. That value obviously leads to uplift in the value of those investments, which will be translated into the NAV of Breit going forward. Yeah. What's interesting is that you're investing this capital directly into predominantly private owned companies mm -hmm. based in South Africa. Is there any intention or consideration being paid to extending that scope outside of South Africa's borders? Absolutely. We are, we are excited and we are cognizant of the, of the fact that there are high growth prospects, particularly in countries north of our borders in Southern Africa. But if you, if, if you look at those two businesses, there are great platforms through which to extract growth and drive opportunities north of our borders.